Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is from a suggestion that one of um, my lovely viewers, subscribers, I know not, called Catherine left on a recent video when I was showing you uh, the latest nail varnishes that I've bought from Chanel. And she suggested, why don't you do a video talking about why certain products become classics with Chanel. I think it was because I'd commented possibly on another video or in answer to somebody about my love for Chanel's Soleil Tan de Chanel, which you see in the thumbnail at the moment. And so that got me thinking that I might do that, although I wasn't really sure, I'm not really sure that I can talk a lot about classic Chanel cosmetic products. I have some idea of the ones that I find classic, but I don't know whether they're the most universally bought uh, Chanel products or if they've been in the range for a particularly long time. Uh, but I thought it might make quite a nice mini-series generally about classic products and why they become so, because the other kind of makeup houses like Dior and Guerlain, in particular Guerlain being, you know, one of the oldest fragrance makeup um, brands that are still around of the premium French houses, they have some classic products as well. I'm not going to talk about those today, I just couldn't do it all in one video. So I did think... First of all, I would talk a little bit about why I like um, Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel and um, why I think it is a classic in the sense that it definitely has been in the product range for quite a while. I don't know how many years and I'm too lazy to do the research, but I know that I've had this particular pot. It must be five years, possibly even more. And it is the bronzer that I go back to um, really instead of all other bronzers and I think it's a re there's a reason why it's so popular well probably s several reasons and I think they're kind of the reasons behind why certain products do have longevity for different makeup houses I think one of the reasons is that they suit a lot of different people and with color products that's quite difficult but there are certain bronzers, certain blushes, certain tones of eyeshadow or lipstick that just do strike a chord and suit a lot of different skin tones. Now, I have to say, when I say that, I'm nearly always referring to Caucasian skin tones because I have to accept that I think particularly Chanel, um, but other very popular makeup brands don't really um, cater very well for women of colour and uh, it's ridiculous to say that what suits a pale skinned Caucasian woman could possibly look as good on um, a, a woman of colour. So I am talking about Caucasians, I'm sorry about that, it's not that I'm not aware of the issue. Um, but it is what it is and I can only really speak about my own skin tone but I do think that's one of the reasons behind the success of this product um, it's also quite an unusual um, bronzer in that it's not a powder it's not a cream it's kind of between the two it's like a sort of hard baked souffle there it is looking not very attractive with some hairs embedded in it as I say um, I've had this probably for about five years and it's still going strong um, you can see I've used up quite a lot and there's a bit of a dent the hairs are from the brush that I use to apply it with which is a Chanel Kabuki um, but it really lasts well and that's another reason for um, why it's classic when the heat of your finger or skin is applied to it, it kind of melts like a cream. And you can see there, it's pretty dark and pigmented. That's not how I use it, but definitely if you were darker skinned, you can, um, you know, apply it with a heavier hand than I do. I tend to use a swirl of the old Kabuki and 
you can see there, it's barely showing on the back of my hand, but you can see it a little bit. I use that to contour and warm around the um, jawline and hairline. And used like that, it's not too orangey, it's not too red, it's a very neutral bronzer, uh, which is why I think it's popular. I don't like warm bronzers, uh, other people don't like cool bronzers because they look a bit ashy. This one manages um, to suit a whole variety of women, I think, which is one um, factor behind a classic so, for example, one of the other classics in bronzers is um, by NARS. It's Laguna. I have it in uh, a mixed palette, if I can open the wretched thing. So, um, I'm just going to cover up the mirror. Here we go. There's Laguna. Now, that's quite a cool-toned but deep um, bronzer, which is very popular as well. I would go so far as to say it's a classic. There you see uh, it's swatching. I do use um, Laguna a bit. Um, I like this palette for traveling. It's also got another classic, the famous NARS Orgasm Blush. Um, and the other one that I tend to use a lot is the Tom Ford, well, I say a lot, you can see from mine, it's not that well used, Terra. Uh, I wouldn't call this a classic. I like it. Again, it's quite a pale, mid to cool toned bronzer, which isn't too orangey on me. So again, that's a good one for traveling. Um, so those are my kind of personal preferences in bronzers. I don't use a lot of, um, I don't use bronzer every day, to be honest. So um, I think that's why it's popular. Uh, another reason behind popularity and cult is kind of the presentation. You know, how beautiful is this? The um, classic Chanel black and gold, the logo. Um, sorry, that's a bit mucky. Uh, it's a bit heavy and a bit big, which is why I don't travel with it. But it looks very nice on your dressing table. And I think that's another reason um, behind something becoming a classic it's got to appeal to a lot of people. It's got to look stylish and different. It's um, got to appeal to a variety of ages and it's got to work. It's got to be a good formulation and that is. So other Chanel classics, you know that I love their mascara, Le Volume um, mascara. I don't know whether it's a classic. It's been around for a while. I know that the Chanel loose powder is very popular with a lot of people. I don't like loose powders, so I don't personally use it. You know I love the nail varnishes, and I think we can genuinely say that this one, Rouge Noir um, by Chanel, is a classic. I know that that's been in the collection since the early 1990s. I'm going to say 1992, it might be 94. Uh, famously worn by Uma Thurman in Pulp Fiction on short square cut nails with a white blouse, her um, blunt cut bob. She played that um, kind of um, druggy, very beautiful character who dances with a aging, slobby looking John Travolta and it became an absolute cult film. And the nail varnish, you know, those of you who are too young to remember, people sent, you know, if they, you knew somebody who was travelling to France where they had bigger stocks of it, you asked them to go into a shop to buy you a bottle of Rouge Noir. It was that popular. Released in the United States as Vamp. Um, I don't know if they ever got it as Rouge Noir. Or we didn't get Vamp over here. Maybe I'll do a video about Rouge Noir and how it's developed and what it's been called in its various incarnations. But it is still number 18 Rouge Noir every year in the Chanel um, nail polish collection. And I think it will be for a long time. And again, so it, it there it was something that got caught the zeitgeist. But it's a very classic, you know, burnt blood red uh, colour. It's a fabulous formulation and it's an iconic styling. Um, people say every woman should have a Chanel lipstick. I often buy um, daughters of my friends um, 
a Chanel lipstick because I agree that they should. I, in reality, it should always be a red lipstick because every woman should have one red lipstick, although I myself don't wear red lips a lot. I don't wear bold lips all that often. Maybe I should. Um, but in terms of which is a classic, I mean, I think the packaging changes all the time. At the moment, I love these click ones that have only been around for a few years in their velvet range. Um, Passion is, I think, a colour that's been in their range for quite a while. It's a very classic mid-toned red. Um, I believe I read somewhere it was a favourite of Madonna's, but that probably changes from year to year. Here's my favourite red at the moment. It's called Fu, and it's slightly orangey um, red, which I like in the summer. But you can see I haven't used it a huge amount. I do try to use them so that the um, Chanel logo stays as long as possible. And uh, some of my more neutral ones, which I use more often, they're quite kind of topsy-turvy. Um, and yeah, the powders that I do use from Chanel, um, too soon to say if they'll become classics really, is the whole Le Beige line, which is going strong, um, but again, it's only been released certainly under a decade, I would say. This is the most recent powder, which you've seen that I use because I like compacts rather than, um, yeah, I like pressed powders rather than loose powders. Um, I've got a few of those. And the whole kind of lay beige line, I think, um, may become a classic uh, because, again, it appeals to a lot of people. They're not very daring colours. They suit a lot of people, stylishly presented and well executed. So I think that's kind of what's behind Chanel and every classic. Um, those are the ones I could think of that were in my collection, which I would describe as classic. Uh, if you like this, give it a thumbs up and uh, let me know if you'd like to see some classics from Guerlain and Dior and YSL and Nas and I suppose all sorts of other, there are even drugstore classics out there, I think, Revlon, um, Maybelline, probably deserve a shout for being classic products for women for generations, really. Anyway, until next time, bye for now.